Welcome to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church in Salado. This scripture reading is for the last Sunday after Pentecost, which is Christ the King Sunday. The sermon is provided by Deacon Jerry. Today is November 22nd, 2020. If this is your first time hearing us, know that we wish you good health and happiness. We can't wait to meet you in person in our little church in the near future when this pandemic passes. Last Sunday after the Pentecost, Proper 29, Christ the King Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and lazy and strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you are pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scatter them far and wide. I will save my flock. They shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them, and I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today for the Feast of Christ the King is Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. 
I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly place. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. He has put all things under his feet and has made him the head of all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, which is appointed for Christ the King, is from St. Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the, his throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from the other as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you are the, the you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited with you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Sermon on Christ the King is based on Proper uh, 29. Since becoming ordained, the Sermon for Christ the King has been offered to me more often than any other. Why? Because it's about Judgment Day. Some will say, I've been forgiven, and yes, that's right. But it does not mean we are still not held accountable. None of us is perfect, but the issue is not perfection. If it's about righteous living, for this is the premise of the separation of the sheep and the goats, but more about that in a minute. In our lesson from Ezekiel this morning, the text is centered upon God and his sheep. The sovereign God says, I will look for my sheep, and as their shepherd, I will bring scattered, I will bring the sheep myself. 
I will rescue them and protect them and bring them into their own land. The sheep, of course, are God's people, and he even states he will judge them. He also said, I will save my flock, and they will not be plundered. I will judge one sheep from another. I will place over them one shepherd, David, and he will tend them and be their shepherd. I will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. Simply put, God is going to care for his people and guide them in the way to live. He will give them what they need, but it is up to them to use what they are given in a proper manner. In our psalm this day, it is short, but directly to the point. We are to praise him and come before him in song. For he made us, and we are his, the sheep of his pasture. We are to enter his gates, the kingdom, praising and thanking him. For he is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Again, we see it's about faith, obedience, and living, as he directs us to. In our lesson from Ephesians, Paul is once again exhorting the church in Ephesus by saying, Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Once again, he is urging the people in the church to gain more and more knowledge of God, because that is important. Paul states that he wants us to know the hope to which God, through Christ, has called us to his glorious inheritance in the saints. Paul makes the point that love does more than it feels. God's people love one another, and others come to know about his love through the actions of his people by showing this love for all God's people. What we do on Sunday morning is worship. It is a time to come together to refresh ourselves in God's word, and when able, through the Eucharist and music when available. What we do on Monday through Saturday is to take the word we learn about on Sunday and express it in the world around us. There are many who have never heard God's word, and it is up to each of us. Remember that when two or three are gathered together, he comes in the midst of us. Paul made the statement that our Lord Jesus Christ has been given the seat next to God in heaven with all power, dominion, and authority, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. From our gospel this morning, we see the separation of the sheep and the goats. Again, the reference to the judgment again. Jesus puts all the sheep on his right and says, Come take your inheritance. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. The righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we do these things for you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he turned to his left and said, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. All those things the righteous did in my honor, but you refused. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Beloved, St. Joseph's has a long history of community service and activity. As I've said before, people regularly talk about the dynamic church, a.k.a. St. Joseph's. This always has made me feel good, and I think all of you as well. This means we are doing what we are supposed to be doing. 
When we see someone hungry, we are to give them something to eat. When we see someone thirsty, we are to give them something to drink. When we see someone that is a stranger, we are to invite them in. When we see someone in need, we are to give them some clothes. When we see someone sick, we are to care for them. When someone is in prison, we are to visit them. For when we do these things, it is as if we are doing them for Jesus himself. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and we honor him more specially than we do any other day. He came to this earth to model and teach and preach the way that we are to live our own lives. He showed us how to be righteous, and that's all where we want to be. Amen. All of us at St. Joseph's Church in Salado, thank you for joining us today. Although we can't greet you in person, we pray daily for you. Our Daughters of the King members accept prayer requests, which you may call in, email, or drop in the box in the chapel. Our office phone is 254-947-3160. God loves you, and so do we. Until next week, be well.